division races across the NHL are tightening as teams jockey for position. You're jockeying for position with your fantasy squad to take it over the top. And we got all of the top news from around the NHL broken down on the Thursday episode of the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast. Kyle Connor, six to eight weeks. Craig Berube out as the St. Louis Blues coach. And what's going on with Andre Svechnikov as he and these Carolina Hurricanes. Let's tap in, let's get this money, and let's get this hockey, baby. You're Locked On Fantasy Hockey, your daily podcast on fantasy hockey. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. The work as a fantasy hockey GM truly never stops. That's why you're tapped into your source for daily fantasy hockey news and breakdowns, the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast. Thank you so much for joining me for Thursday's episode and for making us your first listen every single day. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150 if your team wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On to get started. My friends, shout out to all our listeners out there. As always, much love, respect, do salute, making us your first listen, tuning in every single day. My goodness, it seems like it's been a busy couple of days in the NHL, and that means there's going to be things going on with your squad. So we're going to talk about it. I'm riding solo today. Shout out to my man, Steele. He'll be back tomorrow, but I got to talk about all of this injury news. And of course, I got to talk about Craig Berube because I'm wondering if the firing of this head coach, a coach that did bring the St. Louis Blues team to a Stanley Cup only a handful of seasons ago. So four game losing streak obviously cost him his job. Is it going to wake up some of these slumbering fantasy pieces like Jordan Cairo, though? I'm going to talk about that. You know, I'm getting to Thursday's bets. I think we have an eight game betting board. I've had a good week. I'm trying to keep this money rolling. I keep saying it. But Christmas is coming. The gifts aren't cheap. Hanukkah, holidays, we're trying to stack this money. So I am going to break down bets. I'm going to talk about Andre Svechnikov and a little bit about this Carolina Hurricanes team. Let's kick it off, though. Kyle Connor, obviously, there was a trio of incidents over the past weekend. Good Branson and Nick Cousins. Ryan Strom on Kyle Connor. And then there was obviously the Dylan Larkin, the David Perron, Artem Zub situation. But this was the most significant injury fallout. Kyle Connor is going to be out six to eight weeks. And I know Ryan Strom did not get any supplementary discipline. He did get 10 in a game misconduct. It looked a little bit like a dangerous play to me. It was a dangerous play, but I guess the Department of Player and Safety uh, is deeming this not to be. Steele was right. Him and I talked a little bit about that. The fact remains, though, and I get that he's not getting suspended, even though I would have thrown a game or two at him. I thought it could have even been a little bit more, but who am I to say? The point remains, aside from fantasy GMs having to fill this hole, Kyle Connor was off to an amazing season. The Winnipeg Jets are within striking distance of the Central Division. I alluded to these division races getting tight. Just have a quick peek at the NHL standings. It is tight across the nhl seemingly the central though seven through one no one is really out of it even the minnesota wild i know 12 points back from first but they're very much alive for some of those other spots creeping up that board but kyle connor 17 goals 11 assists 102 shots on net such a good skater takes the puck to the net so well key piece of that top line i was loving that nikolai ehlers uh mark shifley and kyle connor line in winnipeg And aside from, obviously, this is going to hurt the Winnipeg's offensive punch. I think they got lucky in this situation. Apparently, he avoided any ACL damage to his knee. I'm not a doctor, but I know avoiding any ACL damage is a good thing. And that means he's going to come back a little bit faster than he would have. ACL could have been the season. But when you look at who might replace him, Gabe Velarde is going to slot up that lineup. Morgan Barron is going to slide up that lineup. So day-to-day, week-to-week, those might be names right now that you go to if they start to click with chemistry. I got my eyes double-peeled on Morgan Barron and Gabe Gabriel Velarde for sure, because this Jets team is still a really good one. And they are in this position for a reason. And it's because they've been able to roll three really good lines. And of course, Kyle Connor was a big part of that. 
but I think they're still going to be able to be effective. Of course, Connor Hellebuck on the back end. We've got another good year from Josh Morrissey. I was a little bit wrong about that one, but that's okay. I'll come out here and be honest. That's what we try to do on this show, believe it or not. But this is the situation with the Winnipeg Jets, and it's a tough one for fantasy GMs that will have to replace him. It's 17 goals and 11 assists to start the year. He was in the mix as a goal-scoring leader, so you're going to have to get creative. I say that all the time. So tap into the waiver wire you can. Maybe look internally at those two options right now, day-to-day, week-to-week. But we'll dig into this a little bit deeper from a replacement perspective on Monday's episode of Waiver Wire targets because that is when we're going to get a little bit more time and you know i need my boy steel here to take a look at this so let's see if the jets can hold it down without their leading goal scorer i think they're going to be able to do it hopefully he gets back sooner than eight weeks two months would be a long time for a guy like this caliber goal scoring for sure one of the most underrated as well i'm going to stop talking about kyle connor because there are a lot more things that i want to talk about which I'll get to after the break, but I got to shine a light on the St. Louis Blues Club because, yeah, four straight games losing streak has cost Craig Berube his job. Some of these players in Jordan Cairo, maybe even Tori Krug, some other pieces really need to pick it up. And also, when you look at that top nine mix in St. Louis, this team, I'm surprised actually at how many wins they have already this season because they are a bit of a shabby bunch. Let's just say that. However, my friends, today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. You know how much Steele and I have been loving FanDuel Sportsbook. You got to get over there and check out FanDuel. Make sure you're downloading it today. FanDuel Sportsbook right now. New customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150 if your team wins. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action. The app is super easy to use. There's a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, over-unders, and more. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. Guys, let's get it going here because when a coach gets fired, not only am I going to pay attention for this betting angle because usually teams respond in a big way, especially I think it's going to be a bit of an emotional one for a number of these Blues players or whoever was still around from that cup run for Barube. I think they might respond. It's not a ton of them left, but there's a couple of them. And I think this team might actually rally around the new coach out of AHL. Is it Bannister that's replacing him? I'm going to bring that up in a sec. But looking at guys like, Jordan Cairo, looking at some of these pieces, I know Tory Krug's at the back end of his career, but even guys like, honestly, I could get more out of Braden Shen as well. They need to be a lot better. Brendan Saad has only six goals. I know it's Brendan Saad, but the guy has, these guys have got to be better. And I'm especially looking at Jordan Cairo, five goals and 12 assists coming into this season. I was looking at Cairo as one of those guys whose draft value had slid a little bit fantasy wise. And I pegged him to really have a bounce back season. This guy is up there as one of the best skaters in the league. The book isn't out on him yet. He's got 89 shots on net, 5.6 shooting percentage, obviously low, minus nine. I I got my eyes peeled though right now. I have a feeling Jordan Cairo might be a good buy low target right now. That's what I wanted to come on here and say. Even though his poor performance this year obviously has cost Craig Berube his job. And with where they're sitting in the uh, central division, the St. Louis Blues, 13, 14, and one with 27 points, they're not completely out of a, like a wild card spot is not out of the question. And like I said, bringing up that lineup, which I'm going to do right now, and then I'll finish my point on Jordan Cairo. I promise we'll get to Andre Svechnikov and I'm going to close this bad boy up with bets. Again, thank you so much for joining me for the Thursday episode. I do have to give a quick shout out, though, to the Locked On 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Check that out. Locked On Sports is here for you today, 24-7, covering all the top stories around the world of sports with our local experts. So tap into that. But the St. Louis Blues squad up top. Okay, actually, I don't even 100% hate the third line of Kevin Hayes, Braden Shen, and Oscar Sunfist, But a top line that is made up of it with Jake Neighbors on it right now. And then you guys got supporting cast members that include Buchnevich, who's actually had a pretty good year, Kasperi Kapanen, and Brandon Saad. A lot of these guys seeming to me do the same thing. Too many peripheral pieces here. Even a guy like Robert Thomas, I understand he has the makings to be a number one center. 
but I think he's kind of like a 1B situation, and he is just not the guy. To have to count on him as your leading scorer, I love him as like your second or third go-to guy. He is a top six forward. We've talked a lot about on this show that maybe he needs to shoot the puck a bit more. Anyway, I'm starting to ramble. This team doesn't have the makeup of a winner. It doesn't have the makeup of a playoff team. But the fact that they've been getting pretty good goaltending this year from Jordan Biddington is not something people expected as well. Can this firing turn them around? Do they have enough in the tank to make a run? The fact that they are still sitting, quote unquote, within striking distance of a bubble wildcard spot is pretty impressive, but I just don't see it for this club. I haven't dug into their cap situation, but I don't really love what's going on. Hit me in the comments. Any St. Louis Blues fans out there? Is there some promising? I know that Joel Hoffer kid in net. I had my eye on him a little bit to maybe take some of that rain from Jordan Biddington, but uh, he's saying, uh-uh, kid, you're going to have to wait your turn. So St. Louis Blues fan, hit us in the comments in the DMs. Who are we looking at here? What's this situation going to be over the next couple of years? Because I don't know. Although the firing of Craig Berube right now might fire up this team. So I do want to keep my eyes peeled for this situation for the likes of Braden, Shan, Jordan, Cairo, and others who might get a little bit of a fantasy bump here. Over the coming days and weeks, those are some of those players that are out there. If you are looking to fill some holes, maybe that's where you head. I want to talk about heading to talk about, oh, not a good segue. My bad, guys. You see, this is why I need my boy Steel here, but I have been hoping you've been enjoying the solo episode. Andre Svechnikov. I'm going to bring the graphic up here. Shout out to everyone out there who is on YouTube. Smash that subscribe button. See vous play. And if you are out there, Apple, Spotify, we love all the feedback. I probably sound like a broken record, but I love hearing from you guys. It helps us get better and helps us provide you with the fantasy takes that you guys need. Andre Svechnikov, speaking of which, one goal, 10 assists, 41 shots on net this season. This is a player that Steele loves to talk about because when you look into his numbers, this is a guy that can bring triple digits and hits he's not afraid to throw his body around he gets penalty minutes and he can bring 55 plus point value i see him right in there that 60 point realm is it with ease he's been banged up and he's banged up once again head coach rod brindamore and i'll slide into this conversation about the carolina hurricanes perhaps right after the break because there is something to be said about with the situation in Carolina, and I'll break that down for y'all in a second. I do want to hear what you think about that again. Comments, DMs, hit me. Andre Svechnikov coming back from a serious knee injury. I believe it was knee. I think it was his knee. Anyway, this is an upper body injury. Coach Rod Brindamore is saying he's going to be out, and then it was a follow-up question for how long? At least a while, quote unquote. So it's going to be a good batch of games that, again, Andre Svechnikov is going to miss. This is a Carolina Hurricanes team, though, that can't afford to lose any of their top six forwards. They had a big bounce back game the other night. They had a doors closed, players only meeting. Then they come out and have a big performance from Sebastian Ajo. Anyhow, Andrei Svechnikov is one of those guys that when he is healthy and in the lineup, fantasy wise, he brings so much to your team because of the peripheral category value. If you're a fantasy GM this year, that's been waiting on him to come back and you have been patient and you held on to him. I don't know if you have the patience to do that once again, especially because of how many injuries there have been around the league over the past week. Two major names. There's a good chance someone out there already has a body or two in their IR slot. And you're going to have to get very, very creative. And when you hear what I have to say after the break in terms of what the Carolina Hurricanes actually have in store for them. Because I don't know if you guys have been paying attention, but that Metro division is a little bit on its ear. And Carolina has 31 points. They're only two points out of second spot. But if they continue to slide, which they've been over the last 10 games, four, five, and one, this is going to be a tough spot if bodies continue to drop. I know that's purely speculation. But the fact that they haven't been able to get Andrei Svechnikov in there for prolonged stretches of time over the last season, season and a half, is obviously hindering this team's major weakness. And that's usually providing solid, consistent offensive output. We know this team hangs its hat on its defense. And that's why it's probably been one of the best defensive teams, stingiest allowing least shots on net per game and least overall goals over the last couple of seasons. I'm rambling now. The main point is, again, tap into Monday's episode. There'll be some more options for replacing Andre Svechnikov in the top six in Carolina. Is Sebastian Ajo, Seth Jarvis, and the Stefan Nosen, who is now going to move up into the top six a little bit more? I don't know if that's going to be the answer. Again, eyes peeled. Keep your eye on the situation. 
it's going to shuffle around a little bit, and that's why when it pops, you might be able to pounce on it and get a little bit of fantasy value. We'll continue to talk about all of the top news from around the NHL every single day on this show. Monday through Friday, you can find us here. We'll continue to break it down right after the break in terms of big-time bets. You know I'm bringing those fire picks, keeping that money train running. Today's episode is brought to you by AG1. Steele and I love AG1 before or after the gym. You got to be checking this stuff out. We love it so, so much. It's the number one important thing. You need to be checking out foundational nutritional supplement that supports our whole body health. We love drinking it every single day. It makes you feel good and gives you all around nutritional supplement that replaces your multivitamin, probiotic, and in one simple drinkable habit. Science-driven formula of vitamins, probiotics, and whole food source superfoods and nutrients nutrients you got to be checking out the comprehensive solution for your supplemental routine you need ag1 from athletic greens get a free one-year supply of vitamin d and five ag1 free travel packs with your first purchase go to drink ag1.com slash nhl network that's drink ag1.com slash nhl network make sure you're checking that out today we love ag1 for sure we also love all of our listeners out there. Shout out to you guys, our everydayers holding us down. We can't do it without y'all. Man, I love coming on here and talking fantasy hockey. I love talking bets. I really, really do think that between the next, I don't know, 10 days or so as we push forward, the NHL is going to have a three or four day break. You're going to see a lot of GMs kicking tires, I think, to see what they can do to shuffle their lineup. You know, we already saw Nikita Zadorov go to the Vancouver Canucks. That Vancouver Canucks team is looking real, real good right now. So, hey, I think some other teams are paying attention to what's going on, and we might see a bit of a domino effect. Patrick Kane went. I really did think that was going to lead to some more moves. Anyhow, Thursday's bets. Let me get this off the chest real quick. I'm going to be starting with a... Hey, Columbus into Toronto. The Toronto Maple Leafs just put up a seven spot on a really good New York Rangers team. Yeah, they did blow it a little bit against the New York Islanders, but they did get a point. I believe they have points in seven straight games. They're looking pretty good. They're playing good hockey in front of their goaltending tandem right now of Ilya Samsonov and Martin Jones. I don't know how long that tandem is going to hold it down, but right now we're going to enjoy it while it lasts. The Toronto Maple Leafs 6-2-2 two, two in their last 10 against the Columbus Blue Jackets. But I don't know if you paid attention to the game Austin Matthews had. Two goals, two assists, Poppy's back in a big way, baby, over the last five games. He's got seven goals, tied for the lead league with 21 with Brock Besser. In his career, 12 games against the Columbus Blue Jackets, 14 points, eight goals, six assists. Hit me with Austin Matthews. Anytime goal to keep it rolling in a very, very big way. I'm loving this spot at home against the Columbus Blue Jackets team that allows a lot of goals. There's not a whole lot to be said other than the Maple Leafs are feeling it. Austin Matthews is feeling it. They are at home. All of these things add up. The odd is dropping on Matthews night after night as he heats up. It's almost unfair how his anytime goal is so low, but maybe it's because he's the best goal scorer in the game. Actually, no, that is because he is the best goal scorer in the game. Anyhow, Senators at St. Louis Blues, two teams that we've been talking a lot about over the last two episodes for whatever reason, two teams that aren't exactly great. Excuse me, the Ottawa Senators, 3-7-0 and in their last 10 against St. Louis. They do not play good on the road either. They are a bad road team, 4-12 and over their last 16 games on the road. And I know this is a bit of a weird one, but for some reason, the St. Louis Blues play really good against the Eastern Conference and play really good against the Atlantic Division. I don't know why. They have four out of their five last games, one against the Atlantic Division, and wins in seven of their last eight against the Eastern Conference. Just had to throw that out there for a tidbit of information. Right now, you're getting plus money on the St. Louis Blues. That odd is going up and down. I believe it'll change. Right now, it's at plus 105 for the Blues on the money line, which is where I'm headed for my second bet. I think this is a good spot for the Blues. I mentioned the angle, the bounce back, Craig Berube. Are they going to get a fire lit under them because their coach was let go? I'm going to say yes, at least temporarily, and that's why I was mentioning for Cairo. I think this guy, this team cost Berube his job. I really don't think this had anything to do with him. They're trying to right the ship in St. Louis, so he's out. Let's see what happens. The AHL affiliate, I said I was going to mention that. Uh, the coach from their AHL affiliate is in Drew Bannister on an interim basis. So let's see what happens there. You know, I like to say that eyes double peeled, baby. That's what it's about as a fantasy GM finger on the pulse. 
Matthews, anytime goal, that's the first one. Sends into St. Louis. I got the Blues on the money line, lock of the night. And I'm going to save perhaps my best take for last year. If you haven't seen the goal from the Connor Bowl the other night that Connor Bedard pulled on Stuart Skinner, the move that he made to go outside, inside, and let that puck go in almost one fluid motion with the D-man right on him and in that speed, to get it up that quickly is crazy. I haven't seen a goal like that be scored in a very long time, and I think it's time that we pay attention to what's going on with Connor Bedard overall. This kid is obviously worth the price of admission. Give him the Calder now. Wow, what a special talent. Anyway, Connor Bedard, anytime point, Chicago at Seattle. That's my lock of the night. The kid has been special, and that goal, I implore you to go check it out, please, because he's cooking now. 12 goals, 12 assists. He's got point three, four points in his last four games. Loving the Connor Bedard anytime point, even if it's not a great odd. Slap it on your favorite parlay. Thank me later. Shout out to all our listeners. Thanks for holding me down for a Thursday solo episode. Thank you for tuning in every single day to the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast. And make sure you continue to check us out across the Locked On Network, your team, every single day. We'll be back tomorrow for Friday's episode. Peace.